Anyone who's been hanging around this channel long enough is likely aware that I'm a big fan of barefoot shoes. I've reviewed lots of them, from sandals to boots to trail runners, and at this point, it's safe to say I'm all in on the barefoot shoe thing. <laughs> I mean, just take a peek in my closet and you'll have no doubt. I have a ridiculous amount of barefoot shoes, plus a few minimalist shoes like ultras or limp. You know what I don't have? Anything with a heel. No wedges, no chunky ankle boots, definitely no stilettos. In fact, the last few weddings I've been to have had to borrow nice shoes because I'm a dirtbag and own nothing that should be worn to an upscale event. But heels aren't limited to women's dress shoes. On the contrary, many hiking boots have such a significant drop, that's the measurable height difference between your heel and the ball of your foot, that you might as well be wearing heels. Now, I've interviewed podiatrists and functional movement specialists, and they say that's no bueno for for your spine and your balance and your foot and ankle strength. So long story short, it's only zero drop in minimalist shoes for me. The more minimalist, the better. Heck, if I could just walk barefoot everywhere, I would. Which has led me to a closet full of barefoot shoes. And the largest percentage of that footwear just happens to be from Zero Shoes and Vivo Barefoot. What can I say? They're my favorite. So I thought it was high time I compared the two since they both have relatively new hiking boots on the market. Vivo recently released the Magna Light SG, while Zero offers the colorful Scrambler Mid. I tested them both out, so let's dish about how they differ and who's gonna wanna check out which one. Let's start with the Vivo Barefoot Magna Light SG. So I've tested, I think, every version of the Magna Trail FG and freaking love it. The newer Magna Trail 2 is my favorite for its easy on action, low profile look, extreme flexibility, and excellent ground feel. I mean, that thing is my go-to travel shoe when I'm packing light because it's a functional hiking boot, but also looks baller with a pair of jeans. Not hiking booty at all, which I love. The tread isn't super aggressive though, which not everyone loves, which is presumably why Vivo created the Magna Light SG, which stands for soft ground, by the way. It's unique for a few reasons. First, those deep lugs offer excellent traction on soft and hard terrain, including in mud. Second, the upper is super duper breathable. I mean, I hate hiking in shoes. I almost always prefer hiking sandals if the temps are going to be over 70 degrees. We'll link to a review of my favorite barefoot sandals below. But I did not hate hiking in these in hot and humid conditions. In fact, if I can't hike in sandals, these are the only boots I want. They even breathe better than most of my trail runner style hiking shoes. Love! Third, they have a crazy stretchy and flexible ankle that not only makes them easy to slide on, especially with that oversized pull loop on the back and front, but they really move and flex with your foot and ankle, which offers incredible freedom of motion, which I'm all about. Because listen, if your feet and ankles are healthy and as strong as they should be, and they will be if you spend most of your time in barefoot shoes, you don't need ankle support. But back to the shoes themselves. They're made of largely recycled materials, are completely vegan, and come with a removable insole so you can enjoy an even more barefoot feel. And let me tell you, these babies are flexible AF. I mean, the ground feel is no joke. My feet felt simultaneously protected and as free as a friggin' bird in these. I was honestly surprised when I put them on and they were just immediately comfortable. They're stupid flexible and lightweight, a uh, size seven and a half weighs just 9.3 ounces per boot, and they take up almost no room in your bag if you're packing them for a trip. They're available in two colors for men and women, this green blue and a gray teal. And for those of you who crave specs, the sole is just 2.5 millimeters thick and the lugs an extra five millimeters. The rubber sole is sticky, even on wet trails and rocks, and they fit true to size. Though I will say if there's one downside, it's that these are pretty low volume boots. That's not a problem for me because I have narrow and low volume feet, but if you have the opposite, they may feel a little snug. That said, because the uppers are so stretchy and flexible, you may not have an issue like you might with the Magna Trail and its more durable non-stretch material. Josh, for example, has a very tall foot and he still finds these supremely comfortable. They didn't rub or irritate in any way, shape, or form, and frankly, I think I just found my new favorite hiking boot. Seriously, I'm rarely this taken with a pair of boots. <laughs> 
I guess my crush on Vivo will continue. They aren't waterproof, so do keep that in mind, but they will dry quickly if they get wet. But let's chat about the Zero Shoes Scrambler Mid for a minute, because I also have an inordinate amount of their footwear in my closet. I'm obsessed with my Z Trail sandals, Trail Run in my Mesa Trails, and my Dylan sneakers are now my one and only decent looking casual shoe. I love my Zeros. <laughs> And while Josh has tested the Excursion Fusion Daylight Hiker, we'll link to that review below, I've never worn any of their boots, so it was high time I give these a try. They're also totally vegan, by the way. The Scrambler Mid is designed to be rugged, durable, and sticky as all get out. It should be. It utilizes Michelin tire rubber for the soles. And yes, the shoe is still included in the brand's 5,000 mile warranty, which is awesome. They're nice and light at 9.4 ounces for a single women's size 7, and while it's not quite as flexible as the Vivo, it does offer more protection with that nice dense solid sole. Now that does mean that the ground feel isn't quite as good, but these shoes are still plenty bendy. As in, when hiking in them, I didn't feel like my foot couldn't bend and move like I wanted it to. And I could still feel the ground beneath my feet, just not as acutely. That's partly because of the stiff rubber sole, but also the protective and comfy layer of the brand's trail foam between the sole and the footbed. There's a durable toe cap and the uppers are abrasion resistant and tolerably breathable, though I found them a bit hot for warm weather hikes, especially in the ankle region. That area is thicker and well padded, so it's not as breathable, but also doesn't offer support. Like I said, healthy feet shouldn't need that support, but that just leaves me wondering why it's so built up in the first place. I'm not sure what purpose it serves, especially since this, like the Vivo, isn't waterproof, so it's not like it's keeping out liquid during shallow creek crossings or dirt and dust since the upper is basically multiple layers of mesh. That said, it's certainly comfortable. The ankle support hugs your ankle and doesn't rub or irritate, which is great. There's more padding in the footbed than in the Vivo, so it does feel more comfortable than being straight barefoot. And the Scrambler Mid is better suited for wider and high volume feet. I, with my petite feet, for example, had to cinch the laces so much the upper sort of buckled, but those with larger feet should have plenty of room, even with thick socks on. It also comes in more fun colors, at least for women, which is obviously a matter of personal preference. I mean, <laughs> How 80s-tastic is this? I do wish one of the women's options was a more neutral tone, though. The men's are available in black and in gray with yellow accents, but women are stuck with turquoise and pink, or purple. But these are solid hiking boots that are lightweight and supremely capable. Which boot you prefer is really a matter of personal preference. The Vivo offers a more barefoot feel and excellent breathability, while the Zero offers a bit more protection and comfort. The Vivo feels like it's made of higher quality materials, but it also comes with a higher price tag. $210 to the Zero Boots 170. Honestly, both have their place, but if you regularly hike in warm climates and love a true barefoot feel, the Vivos are probably going to be for you, whereas the Zeros are perhaps better suited to milder climates and aggressively rocky terrain. So what do you think? Have you worn either of these? Keen to give them a try? You can let us know in the comments, and we'll of course link to both in the description below. And while you're down there, make sure to click subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss any upcoming gear reviews or barefoot boot tests. I'm just saying, we might be testing some barefoot shoes for backpacking soon. Then follow along with all of our adventures on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. We're at TerraDrift. And read even more gear reviews and destination guides on TerraDrift.com. Then watch some of these other barefoot shoe videos. They're all great. And lace up some of your own barefoot shoes. Wander on.